Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and you join me on the banks of the River Wye today for my Bake Tech Top Tip Tuesday. Now, if you're targeting barbel these days, the good chance are you're going to invest in uh, a barbel grain bait. Uh, and you see these in the tackle shops and there's lots of different names and flavours. But if you look at them, if you break them down, if you open up a bag, you'll see that they're pretty much based around two main products. That's crushed pellets, usually halibut pellets, and crushed hemp seed. Um, those two products, obviously, great attractant for all species, but especially chub and barbel. Um, and as much as those grain baits work great, and everybody has their own flavours, you know, you, you use something, you catch some fish on it, you get your confidence, that's what fishing's all about, isn't it? But ultimately, um, when the fish is seeing the same grain bait time and time again, you know, there's only so many manufacturers over there, uh, and also just the way grain bait disperses from a swim feeder, uh, the fish can back off that, you know, they get used to that. Uh, and on days, especially like days like today, where this river is actually coming up today, we've had some heavy and overnight rain, sometimes a coarser grain bait uh, can be better. And rather than sort of investing in lots of different grain baits, what I tend to do, and I do this for most of my fishing now, uh, most of my barbel fishing, is I tend to work around those products, that, that hemp seed and that pellet, and come up with my own little goody mixture, if you like, to give us some success. So all I've got with me, is I've got some of our three mil halibut pellets. Um, they're quite, you know, they're a, they're a small pellet, um, but because they're small, you can do more with them. Like using a micro pellet for your carp fishing, you can do more with them. I've got a tin of hemp, ready prepared hemp, and I've got a little bit of grain bait there. Now that's not any special grain bait, it's fish meal grain bait. Obviously it's special, it's, it's what it says on the thing, it's special G. But this is left over from uh, one of my recent commercial matches. It's just a, it's not even a half bag, it's a third bag, but it's a bit of fish meal, which is gonna come into play. It doesn't need to be anything special that. As long as it's sort of fish meal, um, it could probably be sweet, it wouldn't matter, but it's gonna, it's gonna do a job, but it's not the be all and end all. And then I've got my baits there, which is drilled halibuts, different, different flavors, some krill as well, lots of different pellets in there. And those in conjunction with this mix that I'm gonna to make together now, are gonna uh, hopefully find us a chub or a barbel. So I'm now going to put together a nice coarse mix, which is going to replicate grain bait, the grain bait you'd buy in the shop, but it's a more coarser mix, which I think when on days like today where this river's rising, and in summer that means that these barbel and chub are going to be out searching for food and more likely to be looking for bigger particles. This mix, I believe, is more suited. So quite simply, I have got some of our three mil halibut pellets. Now, just like we use micros on commercials, and soak them and do different things. With a three mil halibut, you can do a lot more with those. So I like those small pellets. I've got three mil halibuts. I've got some prepared hemp, some super seed hemp. I've got some grain bait there, some special G. That's left over from one of my commercial matches, actually. It's, a, it's not even half a bag, it's a third of a bag. It's just a bit of leftover grain bait that I can use in this mix because it's not about the grain bait. Okay, and then I've just got some hookers there. That's my pre-drilled halibut and krill, lots of different sizes and flavours there and that little lot there is going to give me everything I need hopefully to catch some chub and barbel. So I'll show you how I put it together. So first thing I do, get my super seed hemp. Now obviously this comes with lots of juice okay and that's the key to this whole mix. Those that hemp liquor and juices in there so much attractant just in that but and we don't want to waste that then what i'm going to do is I'm going to take my three mil pellets and i'm going to add about the same amount of pellets as i've got hemp in there into the same bowl there so about the same there okay and then i'm going to give that a mixed range so the juices are coating the pellets and what's going to happen is those hemp juices are going to impregnate those three mil halibut pellets and they're gonna soak into them. And at this stage, I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit of grain bait. I'm not gonna add too much because I don't want this to go too stodgy. But what this does is it just gets in and amongst all those pellets and hemp and just starts to bind it up a little bit. A little bit more in there. And then 
then what I'm going to do, that's still very sloppy, still lots of juice in there, but I'm going to leave that for five or so minutes now and let all that soak in and we'll see what it looks like in five minutes. And, uh, that's been soaking away there. You can see now it's sort of everything's, the juice has soaked into the pellets and the grain bait. And now we've got quite a stodgy mix, you know, I could sort of mix that up and that would throw that in and that would sink straight to the bottom. But ultimately I'm going to use this in a cage feeder. So I want it to sort of have a little bit of a faster breakdown. So the way I achieve that now, now I know the mix is, you know, is set, I can play around with it. And this is where I can add my bit of dry ground bait. And the good thing with doing it, by adding ground bait after we've added, you know, the water or the, the, the juice, we're not going to waste loads of, of ground bait getting it right. We're just going to add enough until we get it to where we want it to be. So really now what I'm doing is just drying this out a little bit just so as it gets the consistency that when I put it in my cage feeder, it's, I, want, I don't want it to come out straight away. I want it to hold in the feeder and bits and particles come off. I want it to break down slowly, but I don't want it just to be a big stodge in the feeder that doesn't come out. You know, and quite simply, a general rule of thumb would be the more flooded it is, um, the stiffer your ground bait. You know, you'd probably want it to stay in there longer if it was a flooded river. But today it's coming up, but it's not flooded. And I think, probably now that's reaching the sort of consistency whereas I can plug that into my feeder which I'll get now nice big cage feeder today because it's so it's a big river and that will just plug into there and then you end up with a that's a real nice goodie bag in there. That's got a bit of everything. All those big particles, the three mil pellets, the hemp seed, bit of grain bait coming off as well. And that's really gonna draw those fish in. And quite simply below that, all I'm gonna do is just have a, a nice big pellet. Probably start on a 14 mil, something real positive. You can always you can always go smaller later, but nice 14 mil pellet there in a, like so, that's about, Two and a half foot below the feeder because obviously you know dirty water you want them to come and find it so we can always lengthen that or even if they're really because i've had this quite often they'll come in and attack the feeder and you can shorten your hook lengths right down but that combination should get us a bite and a nice simple combina combination it's taken me two minutes to prepare five minutes to rest i can be setting up my tackle while i'm well i'm well that's doing that and i'm ready to go Likewise, in a match situation, if you're fishing a match on a river where you're fishing, you might be catching roach or dace or something like that, and come to the last hour of the match, you want to have a quick chuck for a barbel, you, know, you don't want to spend lots of time setting up lots of gear, mixing up new ground bait. This, you can just do this quickly by the side of you, leave it for five minutes, and then you're ready to go when you decide to pick that barbel rod up. So for me, simplicity is key, and that is just full of flavour. Let's see if it gets us a bite.
Well, there we go, folks. That didn't take long. A couple of casts. And we've got a pristine fighting fit. Oopsie, top lip. Absolute stunning. Why barbel? So there you go. A coarser mix made from all the particles that are usually ground down to make a halibut mix. But in these sort of conditions, a real goodie ball for them to come in and find and bring results. Let's see if we can catch another one there. really interesting with this is I'm getting lots of little plucks and little indications and I'm pretty sure that's fish coming into that feeder into that goody ball and they're just tapping away and any bits that are flying off they're coming quite close into it you could definitely I think get away with a short hook length of this thing but you know there's still plenty of bait washing below that feeder as well so I wouldn't be you know I'm not too perturbed I'd, I'd rather wait it Definitely sign for this fish actually coming in and swarming around that feeder. Oh, right on cue. Just before the kayaks came through, uh, the paddle boarders came through. Just knew that was going to happen then. There were just loads of indications. They were milling around that feeder. into all that flavour. I bet if I put a foot long hook set on now. Ah, oh, you're right. Just caught one now. Yeah. Yeah, See if I can get it in time for you. There you go. It's a barbel, that one. Thank you. <laughs> Smaller one that time. Still beautiful there. So my gear today, I'm not messing around, you know, we've got to say we've got fast flow, we've got a rising river, so I've got uh, I've got 12 pound main line, point, point 0.30 I think it is, is, is the diameter, and I've got an 8 pound hook length, point two, point two 0.24 diameter, no messing around, running rig, we ain't going to miss bikes in your hair rigging like that, so running rig, no, no stop above it, never see the need with barbel. You're not going to miss those bites. <laughs> nice and simple. <laughs> Should we try this time? We've just got a double, double eight mil on there. Opposed to a single 14 mil, let's try a double eight mil. Sometimes, you know, especially when you're feeding, it's 
smaller pellets, they can just be a little bit either either wary of the bigger ones or they just ignore them because they're so so in tune with the, the small pellets. So, just changing things around. Well, I've been fishing away here and I've had some barbel early and the fish have come into the, the ground bait and pellets as I thought they might but I'm getting all the time getting tap tap taps little you know there's obviously fish coming in and hitting the feeder now I've just put you know a foot long hook length on and that's not had an effect so what I've done now is I've actually tucked the hook through the feeder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the feeder I'm going to pull the hook bait right back up to the feeder basically like fishing a method feeder because there's no two ways about it, there's fish there and they're attacking the feeder. Now, I suspect it might be little barbel. There's an abundance of these little 12 ounce to a pound fish in the river at the moment. Um, obviously at some point we've got a really good spawning year and uh, you know it's nothing but encouraging, I shan't be moaning about it. But there's, there is a lot of them there and I think they're the cause of a lot of the lines. Um, so what I've done is I've put a bit of a messy rig now, but the hook bait now is hanging literally an inch or so below the feeder. Let's see if, if they're really attacking the feeder if they'll take that because at the moment it's kind of a bit frustrating because you, you know there's fish there trying, trying to work out what size they are and what species they are. It could be chub. I mean, chub will come in and attack the feeder like that. But there's definitely been fish and size, you know, sizable plucks and you know as they're rubbing the the line with their fins and bunting that feed, even the feeders bumping around as well as them, you know, lifting that up as well. So, let's just see if we can find a way just to even just, just to answer the question what is it that's bunting our feeder? around the feeder. Signs all the time, you know, they're attracted to that feeder full of bait. It may well be the chub that are coming into the feeder and banging it. Not a massive one. Good condition. They'll be enjoying this bit of extra water now. Beautiful little fish. Well, that's interesting. That shows that a lot of those knocks and taps we're getting are probably off chub. We'll try it again. I actually thought it was going to be little barbel doing that. But... Interesting. And there you go, just a little foot long hook length. Shows when it's like this, when there's colour in the river, those fish are more than happy to get come in and find it.
for you. A little bobble. There's a little bobble. There you go. That's that's what I thought was giving me those little knocks. And I've seen it before. In fact, last year I did come and have a go with a little metal feeder because I was getting this last year. And these are what I caught. These are. I don't know how old these fish are, but they are absolutely thin, perfect. They're quite juvenile. And there's a lot of them in the river. At some point, we've had a really good spawning year. You know, shows the rivers, the rivers fairly healthy if those things are breeding. But I'm sure that's what a lot of those little indications are. When you're getting those little bangs and stuff, they are busy little fellows and I think they are getting stuck right into that feeder. Beautiful, right. Well, we don't want to catch them that side. Let's let them get bigger. So we'll put him back. 